All right, today's project is doing rear brakes. My 2012 Honda Odyssey. Um, we're gonna start by removing the wheel. It takes a 22 millimeter socket to get the lugs off. Make sure you got it jacked safely. Jack stands, wheel chocks. I leave that on just as an extra safety. Um, if you don't have an impact, make sure you loosen up your lugs before you take the wheel off the ground. All right, wheels off. Next, I'm going to loosen the caliper retaining. It's 12 millimeters. Um, I got a 3.8 socket here. So there's one on the top and there is one on the bottom here. We're gonna loosen those up inside the caliper off. So what those do is they hold the caliper to the bracket and they allow this movement here so the caliper can move and adjust as pads wear. So once that's off, you just need to work the caliper off. I'm gonna need two hands for this. All right, caliper's off. Pads are right here. Slide them out. There's a little bit of life left in them, but we're getting there. Here's the hardware that we'll replace. Now, if you're just doing pads, that's where you'd stop. You slap in the new pads, put some grease on, put some new hardware, compress that back down, and be done. But we're going to do rotor also. So, for that, we need to take the caliper bracket off, which is going to require moving these. So they're 17 millimeter, top and bottom. These are going to be on here tight, so be careful taking them off. Um, they're going to be hard to do. And with your brake caliper, I'm gonna have it sitting so short so it's not pulling tension on the hose. All right, we got it off. Um, if you have a timing kit pill, I'd recommend taking a quick wire wheel to it, cleaning it off. Just make sure you wear breathing protection because there's a lot of junk on here you don't wanna be breathing in. Next, we'll pull off the rotor. Need to take this off. Um, a lot of cars won't have this, um, but this is just the rotor retaining screw. If your rotor is seized, to your hub, there's little um, screw holes you can put in here to run bolts in um, to put some pressure and kind of break that free. Otherwise, you can just kind of smack the crap out of it uh, with a hammer. If you do that, put your lug nuts back on so you don't damage your threads. So pull this off and pull the rotor off. And unfortunately, it's free. So pull that off and show you what's inside. All right, we got the rotor off. This, like many cars, has a drum and hat parking brake system. So when you apply the parking brake, you're actually applying this drum to the inside of the rotor instead of the caliper on the outside of the rotor. Um, I'm just gonna brush this off with a metal brush, um, put some loot in the uh, moving areas, and then we'll put it all back together. I'm gonna show you this on the inside of my rotor. It has this odd pattern, which could be uh, explaining some of the vibration I was getting under braking. But that's the inside of the rotor there. You can see where the parking brake interfaces, basically with the drum inside the rotor. Old rotor, new rotor, put it back together. All right, new rotor's in, the rotor retaining pin, our screw's in. Um, I always go and anti-seize the mating surface here just to make it easier for the next guy because a lot of times that next guy is going to be me. Um, these are coated so they don't have grease on them. Um, a lot of times new rotors will come in grease so you have to break clean and thoroughly wipe them down um, before putting them on. But these are dry, so that is not necessary. All right, rotor and caliper bracket are back on. Uh, make sure you look up the torque and get those to the right spec. It's gonna be tight. Um, it didn't come with, my kit didn't come with new hardware, so I'm reusing the hardware. I just put a little bit of brake caliper, high temp lube um, on the ears there, just to let it a little smoother. It's just this stuff. Um, we'll slide the coffers in, or the pads, I'm sorry, in on both sides. And we'll put the caliper back in there. So it's one thing we have to do with the caliper before we can call this done. One more thing, there is this wear indicator. I always pop it off the old pad and put it on the new pad. So this is what they look like different in wear. All right, last thing we need to do is compress the caliper. So if you see the actual piston is sticking out. 
So I'm gonna do is take an old pad, put it on top of there, and then take the C clamp and compress it that way. Um, the other thing I did was I took the cap off the master cylinder and the hood, uh, so there's room to expand. Um, I can't do this with one hand, so but it's basically that that principle. Um, you can get fancy tools to do this, which is a C clamp and your old pad. Is that that looks like in completion? You can see the pistons all the way compressed. All right, last good thing to do: take out your slide pins, make sure they're greased, and moving freely, pop them in, make sure that boot's connected. All right, everything's back together. We're going to throw the wheel back on. Um, going to do the other side. Not going to film that because it's the exact same as this side. Once everything's back together, um, double check, make sure everything's tight, everything's torqued. Um, then when you're ready to drive, make sure you pump your brakes several times because your, your piston is fully retracted, so it may or may not be making contact with your pads. So pump that up a few times, make sure that's going, and then follow the braking procedure for the manufacturer of your pads. Um, some recommend you know certain stops from certain distances over certain times, some just say drive. Um, just keep in mind that you're not gonna have full braking performance immediately they got the pads have to bed into the rotor um, so be careful with that um, I'm gonna do the front brakes of this but I want the rear brakes to bed in first and I'm gonna do the front later I don't want to do all four all at once just because of that so all right kind of final thoughts about the brake change so on the other side of the rotor it's, uh, minimum thickness eight millimeters so I cleaned off the edge here just took a flap disc and just pulled that rust ridge off and then measured it and it's between 10 and 11 millimeters so there's still a little bit of life left in that probably could have turned it and you can feel those ridges so they're after we take a millimeter off on each side um, and then the pads, you can see that they wear differently. The inside pad usually wears more than the outside pad. So outside, inside, let's measure those just to see where they're at. So the inside was 10.78. outside 12.41 millimeters so just some interesting things to keep aware of the inside wears faster than the outside um, if you have grossly uneven wear you want to check your side pins to see if they're not moving and that's what's causing the excessive wear on the inside but it's normal to have that increased wear on the inside um, if you have access to a shop that can turn these like I said you could probably get a little bit more life out of those but if you don't have access, just go ahead and get the new rotors and plan on replacing it all as a unit. Uh, one final thing, I said that it didn't come with new hardware. That wasn't true, I just didn't find it. Um, so I put the new hardware on the driver's side when I did that one, but the old hardware cleaned up nice, so I didn't pull it all apart just to put the new hardware on the passenger side.